Hello there, good day, God bless you. My name is Duna Mistunde Okuno, and this is a special webinar for singles. And um, I want to welcome us to this particular session. And I believe so strongly that the Holy Spirit of God will be speaking to us uh, this evening and will be learning a lot on how to effectively pray for a spouse and get results. I'm aware that a lot of singles are frustrated in this particular area because of the kind of calls and that I get from time to time as uh, different you know, kinds of singles call me and they pour out their heart concerning how, uh, what their experiences are. And most of the time it's around these areas. You hear some of them saying things like, does God even answer prayers? It's been a long time. It's been a while. I'm getting frustrated. I don't know what to do. And so this teaching is to enlighten us by the help of the Holy Spirit of God on how to pray for his spouse and get results. First of all, let me say the principles I'm going to be teaching us is from the scriptures that if we diligently follow them then we can be rest assured that we have done all we know to do and then trust god for the best to do what only he can do and i'm sure it will surprise you in the name of the lord jesus christ so what we are looking at is how to pray for his spouse and get results and um, we're just going to go there and start right away. Prayer can be very powerful. God answers prayer. And that is very beautiful. But prayers must be done in the right way. As singles, how do you pray for a spouse? First of all, we need to know those things that can hinder our prayers. If we understand the things that can hinder our prayers then we can avoid them and then trust God to help us to pray effectively. So now, number one hindrance that I want to talk about is when you are living in a habitual sin. When you are living in a habitual sin, that could constitute itself as a hindrance to answer prayer. Notice I didn't say when you commit a sin, but I said when you live in habitual sin, because these two things are entirely different. Oh yes, we make mistakes from time to time, and God has made allowances for that because we are human and we live in the days of our flesh. It is just that it's good to avoid mistakes altogether. However, if you fall into a mistake, yeah, God will forgive and forget. He's able to forgive and to forget all unrighteousness and to cleanse us. But living in habitual, unrepentant sin will definitely hinder prayers. This is something you do willfully from time to time. That will be a hindrance to prayers. In the message translation of Isaiah 59, verses 1 to 2, it says, Look, listen. God's arm is not amputated. He can still say, God's ears are not stopped up. He can still hear. There's nothing wrong with God. The wrong is in you. Your wrong headed lives cause this split between you and God. Your sins got between you so that He doesn't hear. That scripture is telling us that God answers prayers. In other words, when you have done something over and over again, it is no longer a mistake. It has become a habit, and that will hinder prayers from being effective. We have been called to live a disciplined life as children of God, and the Holy Spirit is always there to help us to live according to God's intent. So what do you do? Ask for forgiveness and make up your mind. The voice of Jesus to the woman found in adultery still resonates even till today. Go and sin no more. Number two hindrance to answer prayer is unforgiving spirit. Unforgiving spirit. 
say when you refuse to forgive your fellow men, that will hinder prayers. In Matthew chapter 6 and verse 15, the Bible says, But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. God is saying, before I can forgive you, you've got to forgive others. Many years ago, as a young pastor in the 90s, I was trying to pray for a lady to get her filled with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Usually, the moment I pray in less than five minutes, the person is already filled. But this particular lady took such a long time. She just stared at me and said she couldn't open her mouth. Eventually, the Holy Spirit showed me where the problem was. So I asked her if she had people she had not forgiven, and she said yes. The moment I led her through forgiving those people, she simply busted out speaking in other tongues. All right, let's move to the third one. Number three hindrance to prayer. Number three hindrance to answer prayer is bitterness. Bitterness in your heart will hinder prayer. It will render prayers ineffective. You cannot just afford to be bitter against man of God. Bitterness will end up corrupting your heart and will eventually waste your time. You are better off letting go of hurts and bitterness. Bitterness will cut, off, will cut you off from God's grace and cause God's grace to fail. If you have been jilted or abandoned, you have to forgive, forget. And then move on. In Hebrews chapter 12 verse 15, it says, Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Bitterness is so intense that it shows on your face and even your attitude. You are better off staying away from it. Number four hindrance to answer prayer is unbelief. Unbelief will end the answer prayers as well. So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief in Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 19. Because of their unbelief, they were not able to enter into the fullness of God's plan for their lives. Unbelief addens your heart and tells you God doesn't really answer prayers. No matter how many mountains you climb, how long you fast, and how many pastors who said they are praying for you, if there's unbelief in your heart, prayers will not be answered. So the next question I want to quickly address is how do you know if there's unbelief in your heart? It's very simple. Your utterances will reveal your heart because the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. I know that God will not answer me. That's unbelief. I'm not sure I will ever marry. That's unbelief. Is marriage really meant for me? That's unbelief right there. Why has God not answered sins? That's unbelief. If he likes, he should answer. If he likes, he should not answer. That is unbelief right there. Number five hindrance to prayer is where you pray amiss. Where you pray amiss. Praying a means means you are asking for a selfish intent. For example, you are praying that God should make a guy who is already in a relationship come to you. That's a selfish prayer right there. Or you are praying that somebody who is already married should have his eyes open to come to you. God will not answer such prayers. It will not work because God is not an author of confusion. In James chapter 4, verse 3, the Bible says, Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask and means, that ye may consume it upon your lust. Now let's move to the next section, which is a few things that will help your prayers to be answered. We just looked at things that will hinder your prayers, things that are hindrances to prayer. Now let's take it to the next level by looking at a few things that will help your prayers to be answered. Because if there are hindrances, then there must be catalysts. So let's look at those things that can help your prayers to be answered and that you can be sure that, yes, I'm going to have my answer. Number one is fasting. Fasting. Uh, sometimes you need to fast alongside your prayers 
especially when you find it difficult to hear God clearly. When the voice of the flesh is so loud, you can hardly die so far God's voice, then it is time to fast. Fasting helps to quieten the voice that rings loud in your head and helps your heart to hear clearly. You see, there is a voice in your head and there's a voice in your heart. Now, for the voice in your heart to be heard, you've got to take down the voice of your head. When God speaks to you, he speaks to your heart and not to your head. But whatever God speaks into your heart must first of all pass through the head to get to you. So your head needs some clarity right there. Because in its passage of transition, the voice in your head can actually get the message from the heart convoluted if you're not careful. So this is where fasting comes in. It humbles your soul and helps you to hear God very clearly and explicitly. This becomes even useful when emotions are involved and you don't know what God is saying. I remember when I was seeking God's face for the instructions concerning my ministry while on campus and I went on a seven-day drive fast. I've never had one since then, really. But then the heaven was simply open at the time. God spoke to me clearly and I got to know many things. In effect, I discovered that God is always speaking. We only need to discipline ourselves to hear him more on what he's saying per time. And fasting helps us to do this. Number two thing that will help your prayers to be answered quickly is what I refer to as consecration. The next thing you can do is to concentrate. Sorry, let me take that again. The next thing you can do is to consecrate yourself afresh to God. Look at your life and see areas where you have let God down. Take an inventory of your life to see where you have defaulted and disobeyed. And that's very important right there. You see, your last point of instruction is often where you need to resort to in order to hear God explicitly. If you find yourself wanting, then you will need to consecrate yourself afresh to his will and his ways. And as you do that, the heavens will surely open unto you in Jesus' name. Make sure you do that genuinely and not because you needed a quick instruction on marriage. God doesn't like being used as an extra tire just when you need him. Number three thing that can help your prayers to be answered quickly is giving. Giving is powerful. You see, the thing about God's kingdom is about satisfying these principles and making sure that his mercy surrounds you. You want to make sure that the mercy of God surrounds you. So you want to honor God with your tithe, pay your tithe, give your offerings, make sacrificial givings, partner with a vision or ministry that you believe in. It's a spiritual principle and it will surely open your heaven. Number four, good attitude. A good attitude is necessary for answer prayers. If you pray all the prayers in this world and you don't have a good attitude to your fellow men, you are still not getting it right. Good attitudes can open the doors for you and bad attitudes can close them. Number five thing that will help you is walking in love. You have to walk in love and walk in the spirit. Walk in love towards all. Don't be revengeful and don't take things into your own hands. Allow God to fight for you. Allow God to undertake for you. Don't try to fix anybody. The energy you expend in getting at someone and trying to fix a person ends up actually becoming a distraction at the end of the day. So what do you do? Let's move to how to pray. How do you pray? Let's look at a practical way to pray. Because there is a way to pray. When you study the scripture, there is how to. So let's take a look on how to pray. And we're going to start with this here. What exactly do you pray for when it comes to relationship or marriage? Do you say, Lord, give me a husband? Do you say, Lord, give me a wife? And when you pray like that, are those really right prayers? In Colossians chapter 1, verse 11, message translation, it says, We pray that you'll have the strength to stick it out over the long haul. 
Not the green strength of gritting your teeth, but the glory strength that God gives. It is strength that endures the unendurable and spills over into joy. The Bible is talking about strength here. And this is one of Pauline prayers. And I want you to notice that the prayer point is about strength. This is powerful. It says it is strength that endures the unendurable and spills into joy. Oh, what a joy that you should continually have. Don't pray for your husband. Pray for the strength to get the right husband. You see, getting the right husband is a process. It involves meeting each other, friendship, proposal, courtship without compromise, engagement, wedding, and then staying married. So it looks like a journey, and it actually is. So you, you ask God for strength, that your vehicle will not break down on the marital road because of lack of oil or contaminated oil. You pray that your marital vehicle will not become accidented or fall into the hands of another accidented vehicle. Don't pray for a wife. Pray for the strength to get a wife. There are wives and there are knives. Pray for strength that you will not meet a strange woman that flatters with a mouth whose path leads to hell. According to the book of Proverbs. Pray for strength that you will not meet an evil man whose mouth speak forward and perverse things. Don't pray for money. Pray for strength to get wealth. That's why the scripture talks about the power to get wealth in Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18. Don't just pray for a baby. Pray for the strength to conceive, to retain, and to bring forth. This is why the scripture says concerning Sarah that through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age. Because she judged him faithful who had promised. Hebrews 11, 11. And then you see right there in that verse, another key to receiving strength in the place of prayers. The Bible says, Sarah judged God faithful. Judging God faithful simply means believing God that he will do what he has promised and what he will do. Now, in verse 12 of Colossians 1, that we previously read, verse 11, it says, Thanking the Father who makes us strong enough to take part in everything bright and beautiful that he has for us. Oh, my, 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 my Jesus. That's awesome right there, isn't it? Everything bright and beautiful. Your relationship and marriage, according to God, is bright and beautiful. Believe that. Walk with it. Don't strategize for yourself because you don't have any strength apart from God. Stay with God. Move with God. Go in his strength. Moses told God at the time, if your presence will not go with us, then go ahead and kill us here. He knew something powerful. That a journey without God and without his enduring strength is a waste of time. So, it is high time that you realize that your toasting skill, your so-called sexy voice, your alluring beauty or handsomeness, your charming presence alone will not make a relationship or marriage to be successful. You are going to need the strength of God. There are many handsome dudes who are wifeless right now, and there are many head-turning beauties without a faithful man. When you have prayed for strength, thank God who makes you strong enough in what he has for you in his plans. God wants you to take part in everything bright and beautiful that he has for you. Pray that he will make you strong to be a part of that grand plan, that you will be able to see the victory that he has wrought for you. May you experience God on that level, on that dimension, in the name of Jesus. The next time you open your mouths to pray, pray for strength. Oh Lord, give me a husband. Wrong prayer. 
Oh Lord, give me strength to get the right man you have for me. That's the right prayer right there. So you see, you've got to pray right. As you pray, be in faith. And believe that God has everything bright and beautiful for you. And he will give you strength not to miss this bright and beautiful experience that he has for you. Can you pray the Holy Ghost for one minute? I make power available concerning your life, concerning your relationship. In the name of Jesus, I declare that strength is supplied for you. I declare that grace is made available for you. Receive strength to Kembo Shakagiste, Mindri Kaluta, Barashteka Maguza Freste, Be Christo La Christo Balaande Gunumba Kakagizi, Nisha to Agagedo Mate Galatizi, Brishakurate Maka. Receive strength. Glory to God. Receive strength in the name of Jesus. Now, I want us to look at one other thing here, which is the process that is involved in the actual praying exercise. What is the process that is involved? Now, let's uh, try and understand how this works. All right, the first thing in the prayer process is to find a promise in the scripture. Find a promise that talks about your marriage, your husband, your wife. Find it. So when you find this promise, use, you can use a concordance or use such functionality within your Bible or your device. Study the scriptures until you find a scripture you can stand on. A better way is also to have been noting down the scriptures that minister to you each time you study God's word. Why do you need to find a promise? Because nothing gets done without the word of God. That is why it is good to read God's word always and put it in your heart. In times of emergency, there's no time, there's no time to start looking for a promise. But the word of God that you have put in your heart will always rise up to the occasion. So when you are trusting or believing God for something, particularly over time, find a scripture or scriptures that promises you exactly what you need. Number two thing to do after you found the scripture is to meditate on that scripture. All right, you meditate. What does it mean to meditate? It means to soliloquize. That is, you talk to yourself. It means to chew the word, to masticate, to think on that scripture. See, you are rolling it over and over in your heart, in your mouth. You say it to yourself. You write them out and paste it on your walls. You keep those scriptures before your eyes. You do not let them depart. You paint a picture in your heart with that scripture. So that word comes alive in your heart. Then naturally, it will now come alive in reality. You see, the word must first be ignited in your heart first. It must go past your head. It must go past mental ascent. It becomes a part of you, and then it sends out every possibility of doubt. It establishes faith in your heart that it is done. That word is a proof that you are getting your request. If that word takes root in your heart, it's as good as done concerning what you want from God. That word in your heart and in your mouth is the substance of what you want. It is the evidence that God will answer and indeed that God has answered. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So the first thing I said, find a scripture. Number two, meditate on the scripture. And number three, talk to God. The next thing is to talk to God with that promise. State your case before him. Plead your case that thou mayest be justified. I didn't say cry or weep or complain. I mean, talk to God like you would talk to a father intelligently. Avoid vain repetition. Talk to God. 
when you are praying, say, God, 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 like 25 times, or oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, 70 times, it leads to nothing. All right? How many of you would like to ask something from your earthly father and then you walk up to him and call daddy like 50 times? Your dad will really wonder what went wrong. It's the same way with our father in heaven. It's just the same way. Don't just get into some religious repetitions, but talk to him because he can hear you. In Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Number four in the prayer process is to believe that God has heard you. You believe that he has heard you. You see, having talked to God, believe that he has heard you and that it's just a matter of time. Believing is refusing to doubt. Now, doubts may dance around in your head, but no, don't let it get into your heart. That's the important thing right there. Once it doesn't get into your heart, your faith remains intact. One way to keep doubt away from your heart is to keep the word of God in your heart. So the word of God and doubt cannot stay side by side. Do not discuss with people that will pull your faith down and make you like an idiot for trusting God. Stay around faith builders. When thoughts of doubt come, and they will surely come, the question is, how do you handle it? Never say those thoughts out with your mouth. Never say those thoughts out with your mouth. Negative thoughts that come and are not verbalized or embraced, they simply die. When those thoughts barrage your head, Respond with scriptures from your heart. And that's important right there. That is what the Bible means when it says in 2 Corinthians 10, 5, casting down imaginations in every eye thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. You bring those thoughts captive. Those thoughts are trying to access you illegally. So you simply arrest them and throw them into the jail by saying out God's word, which counteracts those negative thoughts. It's that simple. How do you know these negative thoughts? It's right there in the above verse. It says, say negative thoughts, they seek to exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. It tries to discountenance God's promise. Cast them down. Negative thoughts like you will never marry. When you desire to marry, and God says, uh, he that will come, will come, will never tarry. So negative thoughts will come and tell you, just give up. And when you do that, then you actually slow down the process. That's how it works. So you want to avoid embracing negative thoughts. Number five thing you need to do is to keep thanking him for what he will do. See, go back to your scripture and keep on meditating. Do not slide back into some sin or compromise. Because that actually messes up the process. You want to stay in praise and thanksgiving. Remember that the first thing we looked at three days ago, or sorry, remember that what we looked at in the previous, uh, uh, at the beginning of the webinar, is that you want to ensure that you stay away from these hindrances that we identify. Visualize your family. Keep that picture before you. Stay positive and stay thankful. Do not give in to depression. Do not follow anybody to some river or for some rituals. The word of God is powerful enough to save you and deliver you. Keep confessing what God has done even in the midst of contradictions. And I tell you this, it will first of all look like your prayers will never be answered after you have prayed. But you see, hell will raise its most powerful arguments and deploy its most effective arsenals as it relates to your desires. But you must hold on to that promise and keep your confession intact. There will be so many distractions. But you've got to make up your mind. That is when some rich unbeliever will ask your parents for your hand in the marriage and they will put pressures on you. 
But you see, you must not settle for less. Whatever does not agree with your faith and you don't have peace about, then don't follow through. Stay with God. In conclusion, the real deal from God is coming. But the devil will force through all kinds of counterfeits. God will honor your faith in Jesus' name. You will laugh last and you will yet rejoice. God's word never fails. He works all the time. Let me have a word of prayer for you with you, Rod. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift up the viewers of this webinar. Uh, we are trusting God for a life partner. I stand in agreement with them, O oh Lord, even as they take steps to do the teachings that are embedded in this webinar, that, Lord, you will honor their faith and honor their obedience and open up the heavens for them that that wedding, that marriage, will become a reality in the name of Jesus. That before the end of this year, that God will do something great and something awesome in your life. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Glory to God. If you miss out on some of those principles, I will encourage you to go back and listen and listen again and again until you get the import of this teaching and then step out to practice uh, a lot of things that are identified there by the help of the Holy Spirit. You may want to partner with us on Kisses and Us Club to give uh, towards the ministry. Uh, if you, God is leading you to do that, kind of follow the URL you see on the screen, kissesandox.com slash give. When you get there, you'll be able to give as God leads you. Also, we have books that are available uh, on kissesandox.com slash books. As a matter of fact, this teaching is taken from one of our books, and you will avail yourself to learn more and more and learn all you can learn in order to make yourself available and um, uh, ready for what God wants to do in your life. If you stay in the city of Ibadan, we love to uh, love you to worship with us one of these Sundays or Wednesdays, 8 o'clock on Sundays, 6 p.m. on Wednesdays at Shouts of Grace Center. It's at Joker Plaza, Bodija, UI Road, in the city of Ibadan, Nigeria. Praise God. And finally, our devotional website is at kissesandox.com. We love you to visit and be a part of what God is doing there. Thank you for listening to this webinar. God bless you. Once again, my name is Dunami Studio Kuno. Be blessed. And I want to hear good news from you. Please feel free to chat me up on WhatsApp for testimonies. I'd love to hear what God is doing through this webinar. God bless you. Have a wonderful, blessed time. Be blessed.